Hello, so these are some slides that were part of the VMSG VisaCal workshop that myself and Simon ran in 2022. And you can see um, that there are two papers which correspond to the material we're covering today. The first paper, VisaCal 1, led by Kayla Iacovino, which is currently in Earth and Space Science. And the second paper is currently a preprint on Earth Archive, but is in press, so soon it will also be at Earth and Space Science. So I'm just going to start by talking about the different ways you might want to use solubility models. So the first use is obtaining storage depths or more specifically saturation pressures from melting fusions. And the way this works is we know at depth in a magma chamber, a certain amount of volatiles dissolves. And in particular, the dissolution of water and CO2 is very sensitive to pressure. Now, obviously as this melt ascends to the surface along the conduit, it degasses these volatiles. So if you just measure the concentration of water and CO2 in your degas lava, it's not going to tell you very much about what's happening at depth. But as crystals are growing, they trap pockets of melt. And very simply, once this pocket of melt is trapped, it's a lot harder for its water and CO2 concentration to change. So by measuring the concentration of water and CO2 in these pockets of melt, we can work out what the concentration was at depth in the magma chamber, and then we can use the strong relationship between their solubility and pressure to work out the pressure at which that chamber was sat, and then we can backtrack that out to a depth using a crustal density profile. A second reason we might want to model volatile solubility is to calculate the amount of dissolved volatiles. So for example, say you run a water saturated experiment at a given temperature and pressure, you might want to know how much water you expect in your experimental glasses. Or another example here is a beautiful paper by Anna Barth and Terry Plank looking at embayments. And something you might want to do, for example, is perhaps plot how water would change with pressure in your volcanic system. And then the third popular use of these models is to calculate degassing paths and isobars. So simply isobars show basically the amount of CO2 and water that would dissolve at a constant pressure, a constant temperature for a constant melt composition. So you can lie, lie these on the plot and you can look at where your melt inclusions lie relative to these pressure lines. And then as Dawn Ruth has done here, you might want to overlay degassing paths to see if that helps explain the distribution of your melt inclusion pressures. So a number of tools exist to perform these calculations. By far the most popular is Volatile Calc, which is an Excel spreadsheet. Many of you will be familiar with this, where you simply uh, click the button. So say you want to calculate saturation pressure, you would click this basalt button here. It then asks you to type in the silica content of your liquid, the temperature, your water and your CO2 content, and then it will return a pressure. There are a series of more recent tools as different papers have come out parameterizing solubility models. So here is a web app from Icono Marziano, and you can see you type in your temperature, your water, your CO2 and your silica, much like volatile calc. But this model also requires you to type in the concentration of these other oxides. You would then press compute and it will give you a saturation pressure. Finally, MagmaSat, this is available as a web app or as a Mac app. And what you can see is, again, you hand type in your major element contents, your volatiles, and then you would scroll over to here to read your saturation pressure. And this is great, but volatile calc, for example, requires you to type four things in by hand. The more recent models require you to type in eight to nine oxides, your temperature and your volatile contents. So just as an example, one of the projects for my PhD, I looked at 103 melt inclusions from Fisher 8 or Isla Ao from Kilauea. And this would require me just using MagmaZap to hand type 1,200 inputs. And say I wanted to compare all of the different models, I would be hand typing thousands and thousands of inputs. And not only would I get royally fed up, but I would likely make mistakes as well. So I was very lucky in that just as I collected this data, I realised I was not willing to do this. And I emailed Kayla and Simon and said, I've heard there's something in the works. And there was, they had started to develop Thesical. So I'm just going to give you a brief example of how easy this is compared to those previous approaches. Don't worry too much because we will go through this in detail. But very simply, one line to import Thesical on, on your Jupyter notebook. You then need to format your melt inclusion data as a spreadsheet. It doesn't matter what order the column headings are in, so you can just take them off your probe and add your water and CO2 from FTIR or SIMS and an estimate of your temperature. You then have another line which just loads in the Excel spreadsheet based on its name and the sheet you've put stuff in. 
And then say you want to calculate saturation pressures using MagmaSat, this one line of code will calculate saturation pressures for the entire file. And say you're interested in how, say, MagmaSat and Icona Marziano compare. All you have to do is take the same line and add this extra word, model equals Icona Marziano. And that will just save you a massive amount of time. This literally changed the course of my PhD. So I'm very grateful to Simon and Kayla for that. So Simon's now going to talk about why VisaCal was made in Python and the motivation for that.